Think of an assignment sale as selling a property that you don't even own yet. And that's usually where we see this, especially with pre-construction condominiums, is that a buyer decides to buy a property pre-construction and before the unit is actually ready, before the unit is built up, that they decide they want to sell the properties. So what the seller or assigner is doing is they are selling their interest in a property before they take possession of it. Basically then selling the contract they have with the builder as far as the purchase agreements and all the rights and obligations over to a new buyer. So the buyer or the assignee is the person that is taking over the contract and basically stepping in the shoes of the original purchaser to close on the property. A very common misconception I see is that people think assignments only take place in pre-construction. This is not true. Um, assignment sales do take place with the resale market as well. What that looks like is, let's say a buyer sees a property they like and they buy it, they make an offer, but they haven't closed on it yet. And prior to the actual move-in date, they decide to sell it to somebody else. So basically selling that contract, assigning it to somebody else. This sometimes happens, but the seller of course has to be okay with it. Unless you have added an assignment clause to your original purchase and sale agreement, then the seller would have to be okay with it. You may be wondering, why would anybody want to assign a condo or a pre-construction property in the first place? And the reason why is because there is such a long lag time from the time that the buyer decides to buy the unit and the time that they actually move in. Let's say somebody decides to uh, buy a property in 2018. However, though, it's not ready to move into and to occupy until 2022. Well, there's a good chance that in that four years, something has changed. Maybe a job transfer has moved them elsewhere. Maybe they're a pessimistic about the market or a very common scenario I see happen is that people buy pre-construction thinking that one of their children will move into the property, but for some reason, that's no longer the plan. And don't forget, when it comes to actually closing on a property, there are costs as well. There's legal costs, there's HST costs, there's land transfer tax. So sometimes selling a property prior to closing is actually advantageous for the assigner that way. So how does the closing of an assignment sale work? Well, there's two closings. There's the closing between the assigner and the assignee. So basically the original purchaser of the property and the person who's taking over the contract. And then there's the second closing, which is between the assignee and the builder. So for that first closing between the assigner and the assignee, what, what's happening is the assigner is going to collect all the money that they've paid towards the property. So this would be the sum of all the deposits that were made to the builder, as usually you would pay the builder in installments. And then the assigner would as well collect any profit that they were able to achieve, of course, depending on the sale price between the assigner and the assignee. And then of course, there's a second closing, which is the one that everybody's familiar with, when you actually close on the property. So in this case, between the assignee and the builder. And what would happen then is the assignee obviously has to pay all the remaining funds, usually with the help of a mortgage and pay their land transfer tax. There are three major advantages when it comes to buying an assignment sale. The first being that, of course, now there's a shortage of listings and this gives you more homes to choose from. In this marketplace right now, we're seeing very few listings and what's happening is even if you find a property you like, unfortunately, you're very often going to be in a bidding war competing with a number of buyers and you may have to go through like five or six different properties until you actually get something and you may have to go through that frustrating and very emotional process until you finally win one of the bidding wars but not now you finally have selection just simply because you were knowledgeable to take the first step the second major advantage is that you don't need as much money up front and what i mean by that is let's take an example when you're buying a resale property generally people would put 20 percent down and the remaining 80 percent is funded by getting a first mortgage but in this case of an assignment what happens is when the assignee takes the contract from the assigner they are only pretty much paying the assigner the money that the assigner has paid so far towards the project and the assignee doesn't need to get their mortgage just yet because it's required to get your mortgage when the property closes. So you may like go ahead and buy an assignment sale and that project is not closing for two years. So maybe if you can't get enough money to fund a mortgage now, then it is such that it may be advantageous for you because let's face it, you may not be able to get like an $800,000 mortgage now, but in a couple of years time, your circumstances may change for the better. And then this definitely makes sense. And then the third major benefit of buying a property on assignment is the fact that 
they are usually below market value. Because let's face it, if a seller wants to go through the trouble of assigning their sale, very likely that they are really, really motivated to get out of the project for whatever reason, or they need that cash. And you can be one of the people that take advantage of it. Furthermore, for a seller, if they want to sell an assignment, it's really hard to get their listing out there. Very often the builders do not allow them to put it on MLS. So they have to really like focus on word of mouth advertising or maybe posting on Kijiji or Craigslist or Facebook marketplace. So what happens is you as a buyer are able to take advantage of the fact that other buyers probably don't know about this buying opportunity because it's usually competition which drives up the price to begin with. Let's now though take the perspective of a seller. Why is it a disadvantage for them to assign the contract to a buyer? And there's three main reasons why. The first one is that it's very difficult to price. Usually when it comes to assessing a property as far as its current market value, it's fairly simple because you have other sales that you can refer to. However, when it comes to like pre-construction property, which is likely the type of product you'd be assigning, there is no other sales that you have to compare to. You just have to use general guidelines like price per square foot. So you may be selling the property under value without really knowing, or you may price it too high to not really attract any buyers to begin with. The second disadvantage is that there are marketing limitations. In a lot of cases, the builder does not allow the assigner to post the listing on the MLS. This could be really frustrating you as a seller because you're wanting to get the listing out there yet you don't have the number one marketing tool to get the listing properly exposed being the MLS. So what's so is you may benefit by again putting some ads out there maybe talking to a few agents but it can be very difficult and it can be a very lengthy process to find the right purchaser. And the third major disadvantage in this case for both the buyer and the seller is that quite honestly, it's a very complicated process. I've seen contracts that are over 70 pages long. Lawyers very often don't want to get involved with their contract. Agents may avoid you as well because it doesn't really pay that much to help along with an assignment sale. There's just a lot of work involved and every builder seems to have different assignment clauses, different contracts. So what so is, it can be a little bit of a tedious process. So you wanna make sure that you're well connected to a great lawyer and a great real estate agent. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're considering buying or selling, then contact me. And if you're a real estate agent that came across this video, I'm looking for ambitious realtors as I recently switched brokerages from Remax over to EXP. I'm liking it a lot and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.